Good evening, everyone. Hi there, Paula McCoy, Colors for Earth. How's everyone this evening? I see Marie's out there, Rebecca, Luann. Hi, Luann, I'm glad you made it. And Susan's out there. Say hi and uh, let us know where you're from. We are going to do some of my acrylic ornaments tonight. And on the screen, you see uh, Jenny. Jenny is the one that sometimes in the past you've heard me say she's my voice in my head, but she's <laughs> on here. So Jenny, I think I'm going to remove the co-host that way it, or I just need to spotlight myself is all I need to do. Um, pin to the first screen. There we go. It should change everything. Hey, Gilbert, I'm glad you got on. Okay, so there is a lag in YouTube, of course. You see me, okay. Hey, Gail, welcome, welcome. All right, so I removed Jenny from the screen, but she's here and she will relay any messages or questions to me that you guys put in the chat, okay? And I apologize, I'm losing my voice um, from my trip this weekend. So <clears throat> hopefully I'll be able to do this, okay? Hi, Bobby. So we'll let a few people get in. Um, I did share this to Facebook. But if you want to share it to your page, feel free to make sure that you subscribe and make sure you ring the bell so you get all notifications when I upload a video or I go live. OK, hey, Donna Jansen, Pat, we've got a lot of the acrylic girls here. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I am going to get started behind me is some of my other ornaments and I've done a couple of Zoom paid classes. Those are available on the website. You get the two and a half, three hour recording, excuse me, plus the PDF with different step outs. Okay. Hey, Rebecca. Oh, bear with me guys, because I'm, I hope I don't lose my voice. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch my camera to overhead and talk a little bit. Okay. So Hey, Britt, you are from Chino, California. I know where that's at, been out there. So let's talk a little bit just um, about the jewels and things that are on the ornaments. So one of the hearts that I did the other day, um, I had put somebody's name on it, like this one. So these, believe it or not, I found these. They're a crafter's choice. Here's one I left in the... Um, from the Dollar Tree, I believe, yeah, Dollar Tree. And one whole strand goes all the way around that heart perfectly. So that's kind of nice because I bought them a couple of years ago and I didn't know what to do with them. And that was perfect. Um, another one that I did is at a diagonal and then you can just cut it and seam it together. Okay, so that's another way to use those. Here's another heart that I chose. This is just a um, kind of a gold tone, okay? And I may have to change that lighting if it's too bright, okay? All right, let's see. Okay, <clears throat> anyway, so those are what they they are. So that was the blue one. One full string was what I put around the heart itself. Now, this is another one that I found. And it's like, it's almost like a princess crown, okay? Now, this one is shorter than the others, okay? And I did one, this has got clear, it's hard to see it, but I did put it around the neck of this one, and that will make a nice thing to drop some flowers off of. Um, here's the pink one, and I placed it coming forward, but you could put another one. So you can follow, these hearts have a seam, okay? I don't know if you can kind of, there you can see that seam right there. So what I did was just face it on one side of the seam and you could put it, you know, on the other side if you wanted it going both directions, okay? Hey Doris, thanks for joining. Okay, so that's another way to use those. Just a thought, there are larger, here's another, string that's a continuous so that's nice and I like to do them at a diagonal as opposed to completely just straight up and down although when I did that little package the other night when Donna had hers 
I did take one of these, okay? Same thing, just in gold, okay? And I made it look almost like a ribbon and went all the way around that square package. So that's kind of nice, okay? All right, so these are just plastic. You can use glass, um, shatterproof plastic, however you want to refer to them. I think they're better for shipping. Um, you don't have to replace them if something gets broken. They don't tend to take care of those ornaments or your packages. You are in Northern California, Britt says, just for the holidays. Okay. Oh, you just had an earthquake. Oh, my gosh. That's not good. I didn't even hear about that, but I haven't been on the news. But you say everybody's okay. Where are the ones from the dollar store? Are they self-sticking? Luann says, yes, these are self-adhesive. So let's look at one here. So see, pulling it off and it's sticky. So it's got all the plastic on the back and it just sticks back down. So yes, most everything I use is self-adhesive except for the centers of my ones that I do the paste on. And then I'll use um, like a single jewel that I use the paste to put down. And we've got other videos on those, okay? You haven't been able to find the square ornaments. I, you know, I bought those a couple of years ago and I'm not, I'm pretty sure it was Hobby Lobby, but I can't say for certain, but um, I haven't seen any either. I've seen some squ squashed ones, you know, that are more like pillow that are kind of square or rectangle. Um, this year has been really tough because I'm trying to find my matte ones and I haven't been able to find, but just a couple of um, colors, none of the large ones. You like the square one too. Good. Yeah. So look for different shapes and different things out there. There was another new one. Um, hold on, let me. I didn't pull it out here, or did I? Yeah. Here, this is another new one that I found. It's almost like an egg. Okay. It's like an egg shape. So that's kind of fun. And there's a lot of wooden ones out there. I noticed the other day that I think it's Joanne's. Fabric has some what they call turned, meaning uh, wood turned ornaments, and those are really fun. I'm going to work on some things and do more um, uh, something, a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do on those, but that may be next year. Who knows? Okay, so that's where I got those. You can find the single embellishments. Same thing. These are Crafter's cho Choice. These are on a string, so you have to cut them apart when you use them. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if you can see, let me find something that won't work. Can you see that they've got like, the, the sticky goes from one to the other. So they're not individual, okay? So you have to come in, and now I've lost my scissors. <clears throat> so you have to come in and you have to cut those apart before you use them. So a lot of times I'll do this and just cut a bunch if I know I'm gonna use them and then I'll pull them off with a um, toothpick or if they come off with your scissors, you can get them off that way. Okay, so that's those. There's some on um, Amazon has like a package with a whole bunch of different colors, like here's silver, pink, green. I think there's like nine different colors and you get different sizes. So we have a question. Okay, we have a question. Vivian asked, are they all glass? Can you do it on the plastic ones? Okay, so these are plastic that I'm working on, Vivian. That's a great question. Like I said, they're, or they're called shatterproof is what the stores refer to them as. But yes, they are. Okay, for some, oh, I was watching the live. Okay, it's back on me now, sorry. I was trying to make sure we didn't need to change something. So yes, I use plastic a lot. Um, if it's local delivery when I'm doing ornaments, then I will do a glass. Or if someone requests glass, um, I do have some of those. So there's just different embellishments that you can put throughout the design. You just have to cut them apart unless they're single. See, like these are all single with a sticky on the back. There's no adhesive strip between the different elements. Okay, so you just have to lift those up one at a time. So what I do is set it down, 
and I take a toothpick underneath it and lift them up so I have them and then I go stick them on my piece. Okay. And we'll get to some of that in the end, even though the ones that I showed um, didn't have those, I'm always adding bling to everything. I have several other videos out there. Like I said, I have paid tutorials also with in-depth. So these are Paper Studio and uh, um, Hobby Lobby has the best choice for them. Get on their email newsletters. You'll know when this paper, the Paper uh, Studio has a 50 off sale. I don't buy anything full price because they're too much. They're four, four dollars. Okay. This is what you get. But let me show you how I cut that apart to do. So like here, I've got a loop. You can see that one. And then here I've got another, it's hard to see with all the glitter in there. Um, maybe you can see this one better. So here you've got, this is like a champagne color. And then here's another one over here where I've added a couple of things together. So let me show you how to cut them real quick. So I come here and cut between. So that would be one side of the ornament. This is gonna be another side. So there's one ornament. Then I come over here and I cut this guy. Because sometimes you look at things and you're like, I don't know how she's doing that or how did she get that shape or whatever. So there's one. And I'm going to go right between this one up to the large. So there's one ornament. And then I'm going to take and cut off right here. And then this one here. Sometimes I will even cut this little... Um, set off because I maybe don't want that. So this would be one and I've got that extra in case I need it. So sometimes I will add this just over here to make it fuller. So there's one, two, and then here's a third ornament. So you can get three out of one sheet of these jewels. Okay. Your Hobby Lobby was scarce. I know, Luann. You need to just go online and order them. Hobby Lobby is in Oklahoma City, which is like three and a half hours for me. So when I order, I get them within a couple of days. And I just watch for the sale. Okay. So does that make sense, everybody? You got, I mean, if you're using these, okay, that's how I would divvy it up into three different ornaments. And it doesn't really matter if it's, um, this is a flat ornament. So it's like that pillow. And see, here's a smaller size. Or if it's a round, you know, you're still going to have, you could put three, but I just usually go across from each other when I do it. Let me see if I've got one here that I can show you. Give me, yep, here's one. I have my ornament tree. All right, so see this one here. And because this was a large ball, do you see how big that is in my hands? It's like four inches. I added extra down there. So I added, you know, some little extra stuff if I wanted it to come down and lengthen. Same thing here. But you can get away with just one and do paint. Some people just paint a little bit and leave more of the background, which is the glittery stuff. Some people, like me, I like to paint it and just have that as a background. I want more of my design to show. Okay, any questions, Jenny, before I go on? Marie would like to know what kind of glitter you use inside. Okay, I'm getting to that. Good question, Marie. How are you? How's California? Did you feel the earthquake? <laughs> All right, so let me, everybody understands about that. I'm going to get rid of those. All right. So. I am going to roll the inside of a heart because I haven't done that. I use glitter at glue and I sell this on my website, even though it has nothing to do with my other products, um, but it was hard to find and the shipping was astronomical. And if you order some and maybe you only order one, I will refund any difference in the postage because I know everybody's like, oh my gosh, it charged me $17 for one, one thing. 
but I will refund the difference. So Jenny has put a link there. And Jenny, I think you can pin that to the top. Am I correct? In YouTube? I think you can. You remember how to do that? It's like the three little. I got it. it okay. Yeah, it didn't give me the option. Okay, I did it. No on the earthquake. Okay, good, good. All right, so let's, so glitter it glue. This reminds me of, it's almost like a, a super glue, but it's not as strong as far as the smell. It really, of course, tonight I'm not going to be able to smell anything, but there is hardly any smell to it. I've tried Elmer's glue, thin down the clear. I've tried pouring the insides with um, like glitterific um, paints, different things. And let me tell you, it, I, this is the best I've found. And you can find different colors. Walmart. This is Create Createology. This is the, is there a color on this? I think it's just diamond. I found this one on sale. Um, I don't see a color, but they have multiple, multiple colors. Look at that kind of a pinky purple. Isn't that beautiful? And it goes a long ways. All right. So I am going to open this one. So I pour the glitter at glue into the ornament. And I swish it around. Making sure I get it all. Of course, this being a heart, it's got uh, little divots down here. I wasn't thinking about that very well. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of tap off the excess. And then I have a cup here that's got just some glitter in it. Come on. Naturally. Sure. Are you kidding me? I opened that up and it has, and looky there, it's got a lid on it. All right. Nothing like making a mess. Let's get rid of this. So, and let's just pour some of that in there. So I usually keep one cup for my glue and one cup for my glitter. So after, I'm going to just kind of swish around the excess that's in there. And then that didn't work very well. And I put something underneath me so that I don't have glitter all over. Ha ha. And then if you quickly, after you've done, so you need to pour the glitter in, and then you need to put the glitter in there immediately. Don't do a whole bunch of them. So you could do whatever color you wanted. Now, you will have some come off of here, but isn't that pretty? Now, this is a little bit different than this one. This one has more of a iridescent. See the difference in it? This is just kind of plain. So um, look at that whenever you're purchasing some of those. I'm going to put this in a different cup. I think that cup was dirty. No, nope, it's good. That one was old. All right, so we can do another one. Does everybody understand that? So I'm just using my excess glue, pouring it in, swish it around. I usually do about 20 at a time just to prep them and have them ready. Um, you know, numbers will allow some to dry. You know, the more you do, you don't have to sit there and watch it dry, so to speak. And then I usually let them dry um, overnight before I start decorating. Tap, turn it over. These are flexible. That larger one wasn't. And just spin it in there and coat it. If you don't get enough, then you just add a little bit more glitter. And come back. You like I said, you will have some of this 
fall off on the inside. Um, let me see if I've got, can you hear that? That's the square one. There's some, and by the way, this is Jenny's. <laughs> she has picked that one out. <laughs> I did find one more. Already got glitter in it, Jenny. <laughs> okay, any questions on how to do that? I'm not going to do any more. Waste our time with that. If you open one corner of the glitter, it pour yeah, it does. But it's hard to get inside that hole. Um, you can do. I started out using a funnel years ago, so you can do that too. That works also. All right, so then you would just set those aside to dry. The heart ones I found um, online. <coughs> excuse me, online, and I believe they were from overseas. So you would just have to search for them. And they're about, um, I want to say three inches across. Okay. All right. Any other? Nope. No questions. All right. Let's move on. All right. So, yeah, it's got the pour, but it's hard to get from here into there. So that's the reason I have always used the little cups. So I usually fill the cup up and it'll do, I don't know, six or seven ornaments before I have to move on. But there are, I want to say, probably 40, maybe more colors. So just look. And they're really cheap. I want to say this is huge. Um, what's the size on it? It's like a pint. I don't know that it has a size. 12 ounces. Okay, so that's going to do a ton of ornaments. I'm going to guess probably hmm, 50 or 60 easily. Um, it's been a while since I did that many, but I think that's a good guess. Okay. All right. Get all this out of the way and move on. So on the future ornament that you can create the design, you know, where you've got your stems, and things coming off of your bling, okay? You can have things coming from the top. There's no way to really get a pattern on here. So you do have to just freehand it. That's the disadvantage. Now, if you were on one of the matte glass ornaments, those colored glass ones, you could um, use chalk. So let me grab this one to... So what I mean by the colored glass are these, okay? And you can use chalk on these to create your design. And then you just come back with water and a damp brush and wipe it off. But you can't question. on the plastic ones. Yes, we have a question. Marie asked, if you miss a spot, can you re-glitter it? If you miss a spot, you know, it's hard to do it. But yeah, what I usually do is, it's in, a lot of times it's right at the top, at the edge. I'll just pour a little bit in there and quickly pour some of the uh, glitter in and do it. But just don't do a whole lot of glue because um, it'll tend to run everything to the bottom, Marie. That's a really good question. Hey, Miss Robin, thanks for joining. All right, you overdid it today. <laughs> okay, so here's the one. I already shipped, and I apologize again, I've got a cough drop in my mouth because of my throat. Um, this is the one that I put the words on. So a friend of mine had asked me to do a engagement um, ornament. She gives her kids something, an ornament from something that is a meaningful event that has happened during the year. And so she reached out to me and asked me if I could do that. So what I used, there are different types of pins. So I don't have that ornament. I've already shipped it, but I left the other side. So even if you wanted to write Happy Valentine's, you can use the Uniball Signo, S-I-G-N-O, to get a really, really fine line. Okay, you have to work at it because you're on plastic. They work better, of course, on paper or on top of acrylics. And I thought, you know, you could even paint in a heart and then write on top of it. You could do that. These are deco colors. Um, they say they're extra fine. You have to shake these before you use them. And let's just grab a piece of paper. Depends on how fat you want the writing. 
Okay, so it's a fairly small. So if I wanted to write happy, okay, I think you can see that. And they do have an odor to them. They have a, they're by Marvy, M-A-R-V-Y. They come in different colors. I think there's a gold, silver, maybe a rose gold and a white. And there may be more than that. That's the only ones that I have um, used. Now, this is the Uniball, which is like a gel pen. So if you're wanting something finer, and you may get a different, it, it definitely is a different, I don't know that you can tell. This is really glossy. This is more of a matte shine to it. So it just depends on which one you like, okay? Which one do you want to do? Um, question? Did you have a question, Jenny? No. Okay. All right. So what I did was I kind of just visually lined up where I thought I wanted, and I'm going to, let me do it in gold so that you guys can really see it better. What I found with the Uniball, okay, the gel pen, you really have to, but let's say I wanted to do Merry Christmas. Sometimes it quits writing and you have to go back over it very slow. Don't try to, and that's not, it's hard to see. But you have to let that dry before you, you know, because otherwise you're going to smear it off just like writing on anything and it's when it's a, a marker type thing. Okay. So you could do it with that one. So I would put on my words first and I'm not going to do any words on the heart. Um, just because I guess I could, but uh, but if you were doing like Valentine's, you could do that. Let's make sure this one is started and let's do Christmas. See this one's, and sometimes you gotta get them going. I don't like this one as much, much as the other. Whoops, I can't even spell. <laughs> I'm all right. And okay, I'm going to show you that one is hard to get off. Okay. The other one, the gel just wipes right off. Now I have a baby wipe here. I haven't tried this, but let's try it and, and see. Okay, so the gel one came right off. The deco color one is not coming off. Now, let me get a fresh baby wipe. You know, baby wipes are great for a lot of things. They will also clean your silicone uh, mats if you're using those to work on. Okay, so let's try a new one that's got more moisture. No. All right, so if you're messing up, it's a good thing I used the, the pins, the Uniball the other night, because I was like, oh, no, nope, that's not centered. And I tried to pick out the middle letter of the name and then work from right to left from the center out. So this one, you're not, it's once it's on there, it's there. Okay. The Uniball, you can take off. Okay. So here we go again. Let's do Mary again. And I kind of like, this one is definitely um, brighter, I think. Now, I don't know how long I've had those other ones. I'm going really slow. And sometimes you got to let off of the, tip of it because it wants to it's on plastic you've got to kind of tweak it a little bit okay I think you can see it kind of in the light there I should have probably done it on one that didn't have glitter in it but I don't think I have one here so um well I got a heart I could do it on I could do it on this one so I'm going to start right here See, once again, you got to get it going. Boy, it doesn't like this surface. So you're going to have to just test it. Have one that you can play around with. You know, don't do it on a good one. That's why I said do your writing first. Okay, can you see that? I think you can see it if I put this up there. See it there? 
and it's nice and uh, it's hard to see, but it is a nice uh, glossy type gold. So I like these because remember, if you don't like it, guess what? Wipe it off, clean it off, dry it. Okay, so there you go. There's a good tip. All right. So find a marker that you like if you're going to put words on it. Um, I can tell you that I sign with these pins, the Uniball. Um, did I sign this one? I don't think so. Hear that? So that's loose glitter in there that fell off after afterwards. Let me find one that's got, and there we go. That'll do it. Drop it on the floor. I don't have my signature on that one either. Okay, never mind. But anyway, I signed. Oh, I did on this one. Duh. Let's see there. Can you see my name up there? There you can see it. So that is with this guy. Okay. So I sign every one of mine that I sell. Okay. And I put the date on it. I know a lot of people don't like to date things, but I do. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's get rid of these. All right. So on the little heart, all I did was um, little petals. Let's get a palette out if you're working along. And I'm going to pick up the number six square shader. And I have a number eight here. If you have like a size two, the two that I have out, um, Robin will love this because she loves Priscilla Hauser. Um, this is a Priscilla Hauser brush that we used to make, Kala brush we used to make for her many, 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 many moons ago. Um, I also have the um, wipeout tool. And Jenny, this is on the white website. It's called Small Wipeout, and it's an RD, I want to say 11. Hey, Eddie, thanks for joining. Maria, the square ornaments of the dot. They do have square ones? Oh, awesome. Okay. okay. This is fairly small. You can see it's just like from the tip of my finger to my first knuckle. So these are like, like two by twos, I think. Um, but yeah, any size would work. Awesome. I'll have to go check that out. And not every dollar store has the same thing, unfortunately. Don't we all know that? Okay. I'm going to get rid of this paper towel. That's what's bugging me. I got to be able to see my brushes. All right. So I'm going to use Prussian blue and white. Okay. Prussian blue, blah, Prussian blue and white. And I've got um, titanium white. You could use wicker white. Doesn't matter. Either one will work. I'll always shake those up. And I'm going to put those side by side so that I can double load. Um, I don't like to use floating medium when I'm on the plastic. It doesn't work really well. You need to stick with just your uh, pure acrylics. Okay. All right. So let's, I have another one here that's like this one. So you can look at that one when we go. Let me come in just a little bit closer. All right. Always wet your brush, blot it on a paper towel. Okay. Which I'm doing off to the side here to remove all the moisture. And then I like to start with the white, get that in there, and then come over and touch into the blue. Just barely grab that and just work that back and forth. So it almost makes it like a lighter blue, not necessarily white. And I'm going to do a five petal flower. Okay. I'm going to load one more time. I like to get that in there and worked in. So I've got the darker blue to the center. So I'm going to put, I'm, my center is going to be like right there. So the dark blue to center, I'm just going to do a little bit of a wave. Just one, two, three. So that's one petal. Corner, corner. Work that in. I like on the plastic, you'll get better coverage if you load for every single stroke. Okay. So I'm going to do the second one wave, wave, press down, and stand up. 
So I'm doing this. I am, whoops, wrong way, sorry. Press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. That's doing it slowly and in multiple steps. Once you learn how to do it, you can just kind of quickly do it. Okay. But if you need to do it individual, it's basically a closed C stroke overlapping each other is what that is. Okay. So when I do my five petal flowers to make sure that I stay even and not get what I call cattywampus, that's a Missouri thing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard that word before or not, but I do a Y. So I've got two here and now I'm going to go across. Okay, so now I have a Y. And now I have two equal spaces and I'm going to fill in with my other two petals. So press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. You could even do um, just like that. I mean, there's so many different ways you can do flowers. This is just happened to be the way I did this particular one. But hopefully this five petal um, technique will help you because sometimes you get to go in and then you got a tiny amount of space left and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have room for a full petal, but I don't have room for a hat, you know, you kind of makes it makes me angry when I do that. So this is my way of resolving that. Okay. Any questions, Jenny? I don't see any. Luann asked, did you find the purple? Where did I find the purple? The glitter? Did you find? The purple glitter? Is that what she's asking about? I think I think she means the purple ornaments. The purple ornament. I don't have a purple. Oh, you mean like the if it's the purple paste ornament? Those were at Hobby Lobby last year. They do not have it. I'm telling you this year. I think COVID finally got caught up with the glass ornaments, and there's just not hardly anything out there. The purple that was behind Jenny in the beginning, yes, that was one that was a new one last year at Hobby Lobby, and I haven't seen them since. So now I'm going to do just a couple of little petals like it's a little bud. And then down here, I'm gonna do a single. So now I've got a trailing, so full, partial, and bud, okay? Now, if you were gonna write, you would write in the middle and then you would build that design around it, okay? I'm just gonna show you without the writing since we did the example earlier. So once again, I'm loading every single time and I'm going to put the white or the lighter blue to the outside and just do three little loops, grab some more, and I'm kind of anchoring myself. This is curved, so it's a little bit harder. I did find that sometimes um, if I put my finger inside, that helps steady it also. The bulbs. Okay, yeah, that really pretty lilac purple one. I haven't seen them since last year, Luann. If I find them again, I'm buying a ton of them. Like I said, I couldn't find any of the large ones, those big four inch ones this year. Um, I think I found one, but everybody's went to the shatterproof. And even though they're the matte ones, they're ugly because they have a seam and I don't wanna see a seam. That's hard to have to cover that up. Okay, so down here, we're going to do another bud or a partial, and we're going to do just a couple of strokes, and then I'm going to do just a little single, okay? Rinse that brush out. And this is um, the brush that I'm using right now is a number eight, and it's one of Donna's um, green handle just her beginner brush sets she has the signature ones that have the purple handles so they're a little higher grade and there's more sizes so they all we have size eights also we've got um the 2200 series is a taclon brush which is what these are taclon brushes are man-made they have a waxy coating therefore they work great with acrylics because it grabs to it um 
the sables, I wouldn't use, the only sable I use is the liner brush, just because I like my liner, but I would not typically use a sable with acrylics because it's hard to clean the brush and get all of that out of there, okay? So we're gonna let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna go over and show you <clears throat> part of the fuchsia. So I'm using Juneberry and I'm gonna use white with it. Uh, you could use any pink that you like. By using a darker one, what happens is when you add the white to your brush, you're gonna create another shade of it. I'm gonna bump up and go to the size 12. Okay, size 12, wet my brush. Blot out the moisture on the paper towel. Okay, so we need to put down the back petals first, which is what I've done here. Okay, I've got two back petals, and then we're going to put in some stamens and then the front petals. So I've already done some of that on here, but I want to show you step by step. Okay, so I'm going to pick up the white and the Juneberry. So I'm just working the brush back and forth between it. I'm going to come out here, really work that in. And it just tends to make a little bit of a pink look to it. And you can do pink. Um, I had baby pink out here earlier. I did this fuchsia a year and a half ago, and I forgot what I used. So I'm kind of making up a new, new color scheme. Okay, so we're going to press down get it started and we're going to do that shell stroke or a wiggle stroke or an M stroke. It's referred to by a lot of people by different things. And I'm going to do it. So I reloaded. You just noticed that. And I'm going to do another one here. And that's where I am here. So I'm going to just let that dry and then I'm going to go work on that one. But I want to show you the bud. So the bud is just kind of a tapered, and you see that there? Not quite. Let's move that down. So here is a bud. You can do them different ways. Um, you know, it's good to take classes from multiple people because you're going to pick something up from one person that maybe you didn't from another, and you create your own style out of what you learn, okay? So definitely take classes from different people. All right, so now I'm going to flip the brush over. I'm going to put the dark to the outside and I'm going to press down and then I'm going to come back. Reload. I'm going to go down and then back. Okay. Can you see that? You dropped another one of your glass ornaments, Robin says. It wasn't the one I made you, was it? Are all the colors only fire? No, Luann, we're working with acrylics. And I just stuck my finger in my blue. We're working with acrylics here. These are non-fired. Okay. So these are folk art, multi-surface. They have the little tin, wood, and glass on the top. So they can go on any surface. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. They kind of have a satin finish. They have a sealer in it. So you don't have to put a sealer over these. That's why I like them. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep this brush loaded, but I'm going to go grab um, a liner. Because now what we need to do, let me turn this one around, is pull in these stamens that are here. So we're going to grab our liner brush. This is one of them. So this is that um, 3600 Kalinsky liner number two. And I think Jenny put a link in there. Well, good evening, Miss Margie. How are you doing with that hip? Margie just had, or no, not hip. I'm sorry, knee, wasn't it? Your knee? Yeah. All right. So uh, Jenny put a link for the 3600 number two. So I'm loading it with the Sorry, my bottles are well used. Juneberry is what I'm using. Same color I used 
and I'm going to pull out some of those stamens. Um, I wet my brush, I blotted it on a paper towel, and then I loaded it. And I'm going to just pull different links, constantly loading. Okay, so I've got different links there. And now I'm gonna, I rinse my brush. I'm gonna grab some of the white. This is titanium white. This just happens to be an eight ounce bottle versus these are the two ounce bottles. And you can find your multi-surface paints um, on Donna's website, onestroke.com. You can find it at most of your um, craft stores, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and there's different online places. So I'm fully loading with that white and I'm gonna do what I call just a little pressure stroke. It's just, you touch and sit it down and lift straight up. Touch, sit it down and lift straight up. That is a pressure stroke. We use this to do like um, watermelon seeds and stamens but it makes a little teardrop. And if you're not getting a teardrop, then you don't have enough product on your brush. It really has to be loaded well. Tip and press. So I'm not moving it. I'm just pressing and lifting straight up. So I'm kind of at an angle, okay? So I'm touching to the line, press and stand up. Press and stand up. Press and stand up, okay? Those are a little bigger than I wanted, but I want you to make sure that you understand. And you can have some of them that come out further. If you want them to come down, we can go back and we can add some in here where they actually come out and down. And same thing. Just add your tips on there. Any questions, Jimmy? Knee is still recovering. PT today was rough. Ah, but if you keep doing it, you're going to get to feeling much better quicker. Question just came in. All right. So you need to use a special acrylic paint or can you use any acrylic? All right. So you guys can hear Jenny, right? I didn't ask that in the beginning but you should be able to hear. Robin, you can hear the questions. I was so used to repeating questions with the other platform we were using. So you, need to, you, do, um, you don't have to use a special acrylic. You can use what you've got. These just happen to have a sealer in them. So I don't have to worry about spraying or sealing because I don't wanna spray over the top of my jewels, my bling, because depending on what you spray with, if you spray because you want a matte finish, then it's going to dull that down. Your, your bling is not going to have just the raw edges. Yes, you can hear Jenny. Okay, good. I just wanted to double check. I forgot to ask in the beginning. So multi-surface has the sealer in it. These are by Plaid. Um, you can find other classes on Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook page. Donna Dewberry has her Facebook page, which is uh, Donna Dewberry's Oh my gosh, help me Gilbert, put it in there. Official one stroke, that's it. <laughs> and I have um, a one stroke Facebook page that you can ask questions on. And I usually post all my acrylic stuff on there and it is one stroke and more with Paula McCoy. Okay. All right. All right, so let's go back to this guy. I'm kind of letting things dry. So I have little purple. So now I'm going to use dioxazine purple. And it looks black, but it's it's a beautiful color. Um, the dioxazine blue and purple are wonderful. Because when Luann, you ask, would like, Luann would like to know if you're going to be doing anything with paste this evening. No, I'm not doing paste tonight, Luann. That was, I did that like a few weeks ago. Um, I don't know if Jenny can go grab that video and she could link you to it, but it is, um, 
I did one maybe a month ago on paste, a new one for you guys free. Somebody was asking a bunch of questions, okay? So it is out there. All right, so now let's grab like a number two flat or square shader. I'm wetting it, blotting. So it's a tiny, tiny brush, okay? Itty bitty. And I'm gonna grab that purple and white and it almost is gonna make like a lighter purple, but I can corner in the white and I can pull in just some little, just kind of press. Now I need more purple. Press and lift just to make like a little stock flower. It's like a filler. It's nothing, no particular flower. And as you need, just grab white or the purple. Get that on there. And I can go in and just fill in. With some strokes, some filler flowers. You got to leave room for leaves. Don't forget that. All right. Okay, so Jenny put a link up there for that other YouTube, um, Luann. So you might want to click on that and open it in another browser. That way you have it for later, okay? So see, they're just little. It's almost like I'm on the side of the brush. Well, I am. I'm kind of like pressing it down. I'm going to grab some more purple. So you can just kind of gather them up. It's not really... It's not really a lilac or wisteria like this is, because that was stippled on, but it's more of a stroke, just of a filler. It could be, it could be a wisteria, I guess. It's just a filler flower, is what we're calling it. So just add some of those in there. Sometimes with the smaller brushes, it's hard to double load, so to speak. So Sometimes it's easier just to go grab whichever color you run out of and put it on the brush. And I am by no means an expert. I just love to create and hopefully you can use some of these tips and tricks in what you're trying to work on. So you could do this on wood, it doesn't have to be on an ornament. You can pretty much put it on anything you want. Okay, you can see all those. All right, I'm going to rinse that brush. All right, um, then we need some greens. So I like to use uh, citrus green and sap. You could use thicket, which is another dark green. As long as you've got a light and a dark is what you're looking for. We'll put some leaves on here and then we'll go back to the fuchsia. So I'm gonna go back to the number six square shader, wet it, blot it on a paper towel. And I'm gonna double load. So I'm gonna do like half and half. And what I'm doing is just working the brush between the two. If I need more of one, I can corner load it and then get that worked into the brush before I start. I like to put the dark corner next to the flower so that it's darker down in. And I bet you can't, it'd be easier if I had it over here against the white background. So press and slide. So my brush did not turn. All right, so let's look at that. So here's my, say that's my flower up there. So I'm press and slide off. I can turn my piece to change where my leaf goes, press and slide off. So you start basically in a V, if you can visualize that, or when you're practicing, Okay, you've got your V. I put the dark corner, press and slide off. 
So I'm not hooking the brush. I'm not turning it. I'm literally pressure, pull for the thickness or the length of it, and then start to lift on the brush and come off that chisel edge. So I'm going towards my elbow and off at my tummy. That's the best way that I can explain it. And that seems to help people. Okay, so press, slide, press, slide, press, slide. Okay, so I'm not doing this. Does that make sense, everybody? Like, like you can really talk back to me. That visual with the V really helped. Oh, great, great, great. That's awesome. So if, if you know that you're going to do like three strokes and this is going to be your stem to those, then press and slide, press and slide. Okay, so press and slide. And then you can, I tend on the plastic to come back and put my um, stems in, but you can come on the chisel edge and you can slide it down and pull those stems in if you want or you can come back with a liner brush. But if you have a nice brush, you see you can get a nice straight line up on the chisel edge. And I broke out a brand new brush for tonight. Okay, hopefully that helps. Um, there was something else I was thinking of. All right, so I'm just gonna go in here and press and slide. And you really have to load, if you want this not so transparent, you need to load for each stroke. And the smaller brushes tend to be a little more transparent, I would say. So then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just catch one there. That'll help. Create a, like a stem. And you can overlap. Well, thank you, Gilbert. I appreciate that. You know, I try to teach the way I wished I had been taught many years ago. Um, and I've been doing uh, this type of painting. I actually did more one stroke or toll type painting uh, many years, probably, hmm, shall we say 35, 40 years ago. And just kind of got back into it um, right before COVID. I needed something, I needed something that wasn't work. Is that funny? I just needed some relief and it's a stress reliever for me. And I know it is for you, Gilbert. Makes it easy to understand. I have trouble with the flat leaves. Okay, so the V, see, that's what I'm saying. Every teacher is different and somebody's gonna say something that like, oh, that's what so-and-so was talking about. So yeah. Take classes, you know, review other teachers because there may be something I'm saying that doesn't make sense to you and somebody else may say it and you're like, oh, that's what Paula meant. So we all learn um, different ways. So we're just going to come in here and just add some more leaves. Just try not to, the V helps because a lot of people, um, you know, they start their stem and they always, they want to start their leaf square here. Well, that doesn't look very nice. So if you've got, don't you like me painting on myself? If you start at an angle, think of it as if that's where your stem is, start that dark right next to where that stem is. Okay, start it right there. Press, pull, and lift. Well, if you didn't have a bump in your skin. Does that make sense? Hopefully that, yeah, painting is to, uh, definitely a stress release um, for sure. I can get lost. Well, in any of my paint, even if it is for work, you kind of get lost in it and then you're not thinking about those other things, life <laughs> for sure. All right, any other questions, Jenny? I'm just kind of pulling some leaves in here in different places? No. Oh, no questions. Okay, thank you. 
Whoops, I did that one backwards. The why also, yeah. See, I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Just little tiny things that you may not think about. And then somebody says it and it's like, oh, that's what. Or I'll watch somebody do something and I'm like, oh, that would be so much easier doing it that way. So definitely check out, you know, other people out there because we all do things differently. Okay. So you can just keep pulling in little leaves here and there. All right. Oh, Lord, this <laughs> stress reliever, you're laughing. Yeah, you don't like, well, no, this isn't the leaf. It's the wiggle leaf, the M stroke that you don't like, Luann. You struggled up in Wisconsin with that one. <laughs> you're so funny. All right. So you could add, um, you know, other fillers. You could stipple. I mean, there's so many different ways you can do things. But before we do that, let's put our stems in. I am going back to my 3600. Um, number two, and I am wetting this and thinning out the sap and I'm loading. So when I'm loading the brush, you see that I'm pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, and I'm turning the brush over as I'm doing it because then you're coating all the hair. Remember, when you wash your hair and you put shampoo on it, you don't just put it over the top of your hair and expect for it to get down in to your scalp, right? So you have to load the brush the same way. You have to work that color into it so that it can carry longer whenever you're trying to do your strokes, okay? That's all you can do, Luann, is keep trying, absolutely. And practice makes perfect. So I'm gonna just pull in some center veins on those leaves. And I'm also gonna add some little calyx on those little buds. You see those? So on this bud here, I'm gonna press and lift out, press and lift out. And I'm gonna go back and add veins. Yeah, you gotta practice. Just when you said that I'm not going to add another medium, to my repertoire. <laughs> well, if you're going to buy an acrylic, this is one that I recommend, okay? The multi-surface, um, definitely. Because you can paint on anything. I've got a mailbox, a new one that I've been wanting to paint for myself for a year and a half ago. My kids gave it to me for Mother's Day and I have yet to get it painted, but I will. And I'm going to do hydrangeas on that one. Maybe I'll videotape it when I do it. We'll see. But, um, but Britt, when you're talking about adding another medium, honey, you can use these same strokes, same techniques with the color concentrates on your clay. You can do it on ceramic bisque. I mean, you don't have to. The brush stroke is just another way of decorating, okay? You do not necessarily, because you can make your clay ornaments. Look at all those clay ones I did. I could have brush stroked on there if I wanted to. Okay. So you don't have to buy another medium. I need to put a stem going out to that little grouping. All right. Does anybody, yeah, maybe just a little bit here, just to make sure they're not floating. Okay, so does that make sense, uh, Britt? You don't. You can do this on your ceramic, on your stoneware. Same difference. I've got multiple videos that I've done um, over the last year doing that. So check those out. You don't have to change. And if you need um, help converting or doing something in a different medium, just let me know. Or check out my YouTube because I've got a ton of stuff. You can ask uh, Robin, you can ask Eddie, Luann, there's tons of stuff out there. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, Daffodil Yellow, and I'm going to use that, um, it's referred to as the Kiss Tool or that small wipeout tool that we have on the website. And I'm going to anchor on my jewels so that I don't put my hand in anything wet. And I'm going to just make 
some dots for the center. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick on that too after I do this, because I'm going to do it with a darker color on paper so that you can definitely see it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some of the citrus also amongst those yellow ones just to give it another color in there. I see the chat going. Has anybody else got questions? I have it all. <laughs> You've been going through all the YouTube videos for glass and pottery. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, it may be, and some of them cross over um, as far as techniques. And then sometimes there's something you can't do with one, but um, color concentrates can work on glass. They can work on the clay. You can't put them on here because those are fired products. So if you're on a surface that's non-fired, then that's when I recommend the Plaid Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. It has the little emblem on the top that's a metal, wood, and glass. So it works on anything. Can you spray over it? Absolutely, you can spray over it. Aren't those cute? I just love those. So you would wait for one side to dry and then come back and do your other side. I'm going to attempt to wipe off my hand here so you don't have to look at leaves. All right. Now I'm going to show you the dot thing just because we do have some newer people. So with that tool, I'm gonna just grab a dark color here, the Juneberry. So every time you load and you place a dot, you will get the same size dot, okay? If you load every time, it doesn't matter if you're loading with this or the handle of a brush. If you keep going with what's on, your tip, you get what we call graduated dots. Okay. So if you load for every single, you get the same size. And if you don't, then you get different size groupings. Okay. Yeah, your Bisc Birdhouse, Marie. Absolutely. I'd love to see that. I love it. Yeah, years ago, uh, I've done so many different things. It's unbelievable. And, you know, with your ceramic stuff, you can fire it. Um, if you're 0406, you could fire the bisque and then use acrylics on it versus using something fired. Okay, so you can do both. Um, I can't reach the birdhouse that I did many, many years ago. It was a uh, Duncan class, and it was a Maureen McNaughton. And if any of you are into the tall painting, you know who that is. And she has beautiful work. I love her stuff. And it's got a lot of toll painted type things. And I keep sticking my finger in paint. Okay, so if you're using the handle of a brush, same thing. If you load for every single time, you're going to get the same size dot. If you just keep using what's on there, then you eventually run out. Okay. So there's another little tip. Hopefully that helps. And depending on the size handle of your brush, you know, larger handle, larger dot. Okay, larger dot. So think about what you want. And you know, they've got all those Mandela tools now with all the balls on the end. We have um, our dotting tools. This is the uh, size two. And it's really nice to come back in, you know, and add dots also. And I do have a video on using those dotting tools. Um, it's with glass paint, but it is out there. Okay. What did Marie say? It actually, oh, the birdhouse. Yes. What was her name again? Maureen McNaughton. Thank you, Luann. I think that's spelled correctly. But if you start typing it in in Google, she's from Canada, I believe is where she's located. I don't, she was around, now we're talking, I got to get a drink. Um, we're talking 30, 25, 30 years ago when I was doing some of her stuff. So I don't even, I mean, I think she's still alive. I just don't know if she um, actively teaches or anything, but she probably has pattern packs and things that you can buy. Okay, so let's get back to the fuchsia. Turn this around. So we've got uh, the stamens coming out. So now we need to 
go back to our, uh, I left paint in it. There we go. To our Juneberry. Let's see if this brush is too dry. And white, titanium white, wicker white, either one will work. Work that color into the brush back and forth. And we're going to do a couple of loops on the top so that it looks like these are underneath, which is what we want. Okay. So question. Can, okay, we have a question. Yeah, and Doris would like to know if you use folk art enamel paint, do you have to seal it? The folk art enamel is for glass. And you can, if you're on glass, you can bake it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that makes it hard. Um, I don't, I, but you can use this on top of the glass and you can bake your um, multi-surface in the oven too. The enamels, and those of you that are my glass peeps, don't get confused. This is a non-fired enamel that I'm talking about, and I don't have a bottle I can show you, but that folk art enamels is what they say to use on glass. It's very translucent. You would have to put multiple coats, but you can use the multi-surface on glass, okay? And if Gilbert's still out there, he could tell you with those enamels, I believe it's, um, is it 325? Put it in a cold oven, 325. And I think it's 20 minutes in the oven and let it completely cool by itself. Don't try to take anything out because you're going to thermal shock your glass, okay? If you're working on glass, glass, like glass jars. But if you're using the multi-surface, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. I use them. Yes, I have. I just don't like them as well because they're so transparent. Um, and I don't want to, I don't, I want to do it one and done and done. I don't want to have to go back and put multiple coats on it. Folk art. It's by plaid. Right. So these products are by plaid down here at the bottom of the jar or the bottle it says plaid folk art. And then they're multi-surface. The bottles have changed. Uh, excuse me, the labels have changed. This is an older one. Um, I don't even know if I have a newer one out here. Um, this is a floating medium. It's more like that type of, I don't have a newer, but they're a, they're a nice, they just changed the label, which, you know, a lot of companies do that periodically. Okay, so I've got that one on there. Now I need to, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm not going to use that brush. I'm going to go down one size or go down to the eight or the six. I'm going to use the eight in the value pack, which is um, Donna's brush also. Excuse me. Yeah, the Folk Art Multi-Surface has a sealer. Thank you, Jenny. So then I've got like two, I've got three strokes. They're almost like, uh, petals that are like holding everything together. Okay, so I'm going to grab some of both of those, the same color, the Juneberry and the white. And I'm going to make sure that Juneberry's at the bottom. I probably should wait for this to dry a little bit, but I'm going to come in here and just do, remember that leaf stroke that we just did over here on this guy, the little press, pull, and lift? That is the same stroke that I'm doing here. Oh, Jenny, I think we need to give something away if somebody answers this correctly. What is a brush stroke comprised of? What are the three things that a brush stroke is made up of? Does anybody know? I haven't said it tonight. So you may not. Those that have been with me for a while will know what I'm talking about. But the first one that we see that answers that correctly is going to get a 3600 number two liner, my favorite liner. Okay, so I did three of those little like leaf strokes. The enamels are glossy, correct. Thank you, Donna. I, I did not state that. And you never, you never bake them, really? You just let them air dry for, oh, 21 days. Yes, you can do that. But if you're in a hurry, you can, after 24 hours dry, then you can put them in the cold oven and do it up. Color, stroke, and motion. Almost. <laughs> yeah, Robin, you don't get to answer. <laughs> you don't get to answer. You're cute. 
You've almost got it. Think again. Color. What's the second one? Color. All you can come up is pressure and link. Okay, almost. So if you combine the two of those, I'm going to let it go for just a little bit and see if anybody comes up with it. <laughs> Color is the first one. Doris says she wished she knew. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab uh, my liner brush. Okay, Marie, pressure. Pressure is one of them. What's the last one? Color, pressure. You got to say all three of them. There you go, Marie. Awesome. Marie wins a brush. <laughs> Jenny, will you make note of that for me? So a, a brush stroke is a combination of color, pressure, and motion. So if you load one color or two colors, the combination of the color on the brush, the amount of pressure that you put on it, and the motion, meaning how you move it, it becomes a brush stroke. Okay, color, pressure, and motion is a brush stroke. So it could be one color, it can be multiple colors. Did you see how slowly I did that? So don't try to be really fast. Fast is not best, and there's no price for finishing first. How's that? Okay, all right. See, I knew if I talked to you enough, you'd remember. We haven't given away any prizes in a while. So I've got my 3,600 number two liner, and now I'm going to add the stem. So the stem is like a little ball. So I'm going to just pressure, and then I'm going to lift and come up. See that? So it's just pressure, and then I started lifting and come off to the point. So color, pressure, and motion is the brush stroke. And now we're going to add some of these darker ones. This is just the Juneberry by itself. And these are like little calyx. The other pink ones were just smaller petals. Okay. So color, pressure, and motion. And loading for every stroke on the plastic makes a huge difference. Okay, so for that bud, I did the same thing like I did for the stem for the full flower. I'm just going to press it down like on top of it, get it rounded and then start lifting. And I'm bringing it back down to here. So I'm, I'm pretending that it's coming off of the jewels. So press, pull, lift, 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 lift to the point. So when you're doing a brush stroke, you don't have to do it fast. Remember my saying that I always say is, the airplane does not go to the end of the runway and just stand straight up it gently glides off of that runway. So color, pressure, and then the motion, nice and slow. Think about it, be methodical when you're, you know, and make sure you know where you're gonna go to, where you're aiming, okay? So all of these are coming off of the jewels. This one's coming up to the top. This one was to top. So I've thought about where it's coming and use the jewels as like stems, even though they're not the same color, but that's what it reminds you of, okay? Does that all make sense, guys? Isn't that pretty? All right, so while we've got this color in the brush, let's go ahead and pull in these, do these again. So we can start here, just up on the tippy toes, okay? Tippy toes, because remember, if you put pressure down, you're going to get a fat line. So you want to stay up on the point and just drag. And if you've got enough product on your brush, it will follow where you lead it. So color, the amount of pressure, which is very little on here, and the motion, I'm dragging it or pulling it down. Okay. Rinse. And we'll add the white. And I apologize again. I'm so hoarse. I need more sleep. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So ready? We're going to do that pressure stroke. Remember, this is your, I'm going to turn my hand sideways. You touch, press down, lift straight up, and you get a teardrop or a watermelon seed, whatever you, so touch, press, lift straight up. There's no hooking, no turning at all. Okay, ready? Press and lift up. Press and lift up. And you've got to keep, when you're doing the pressure strokes, you've got to keep a lot of product on your brush. It looks like it's overfilled, but if you don't, you're not going to get that little teardrop on the end. And you'll know, and you'll have to just go back and add a little bit more. But did you notice that I'm constantly touching my white to get a nice, now here I didn't, after I just said that, then I'm, I'm a liar. Press and lift. I'm going to go over that one again. Okay. All right. All right. And then anybody that's from the um, ceramic or glass that's on here, if there's something you would like to see in the future, um, be sure and message me or you can put a comment here. And hopefully we'll catch it. Sometimes these comments are on the replays and sometimes they're not. I'm not sure. But if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get all notifications. That helps us. We just hit, uh, what was it, 6,400, I think, subscribers recently. See that? So it's just a, a long comma stroke. And depending on if you curve it or just pull it straight. Fun. Okay. All right. So let's, I think I've got everything on here. We just need to work on leaves on this guy. So on, and you know, you could do, I just did long slender leaves on these. You could do any kind of a leaf you wanted, but we've done the M stroke. We've done the wiggle. We've done the slider or the little leaf stroke. So I just made these longer is what I did. Same kind of uh, stroke, but just longer. I'm gonna <clears throat> put out some more green that I have because I thinned that green down. <laughs> oh, 6,430, all right, we were at 20 yesterday. Yay, woohoo, amazing. <laughs> All right, I think I want to use the eight on here. So this is the number eight flat or square shader. And I'm gonna pick up the light, the citrus, and then the sap. I'm gonna come over here and work it. because I'm getting too much of the sap. And then, we're just going to pull in just, I'm going to put the dark towards the stem, press, pull, lift, lift, lift. So it's just a long, very long. I may have to go to a larger one, larger brush. And we could have one coming like from here. So you're just going back and filling in. So unfortunately on the ornaments, it's hard to get a pattern on something. So you do practice on paper and then move to the ornament. Okay, that helps. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. I'm gonna overlap that stem and pull a long one in. And then I've got those there, so I need to come off of the stem of the bud. Jenny, you just interrupt me if anybody has a question or something we need to address. I don't hear her, so I think she's falling asleep over there. Where do you find the little cups <laughs> that you're using? Um, these are just those little condiment cups. Um, they're solo. You can, uh, any restaurant supply store, this is a two ounce. And then this size... Luann is the four ounce. See the difference in them? 
So I have a local restaurant supply. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. But if you just look up restaurant or solo disposable cups, you should be able to find them and order them online. I'm sure you can get them from Amazon, but your I think your restaurant supply is going to be much cheaper personally because you can get like, I don't know, 200 in a bag, I think is what mine are. I'm still here. The dog was barking. <laughs> oh, okay. Jenny's here. <laughs> she spared us the dog. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you can just come in and add. Maybe I just want a little one there. I'm trying to hold on to the where the jewels are so that I don't stick my hand in it. And I'm going to sneak one in there. Okay, and you can keep adding more if you want. Um, I just overlapped a whole bunch of different ones on there, and then I added some treasure gold um, comma accents, and I do want to show you that because I do have a little trick to using that treasure gold that has helped me anyway. Let me rinse this brush out. Good. All right. And then before we do that, let's grab some of the greens and pull in some stems. I'm just kind of making a medium green. And like I said, you could do it with your um, chisel edge, okay, so of your square shader. So the chisel edge is what this is at the top, okay? So it's this, this is your chisel, your ferrule and then your belly of the brush. So if you were to slide on the chisel edge, that's how I got that line, which you can do that if you don't have a liner. And if you have a nice uh, square shader that isn't um, got some hairs going wacky. But there's always more than one way to do something. So if you don't have one brush, you possibly can get it done with another one. I'm trying to make sure nothing's wet. Okay. I'm not gonna do um, curly cues on that, but on these, I did put a couple on it. So let me move this over so you can see. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can touch the brush and just wave make it look like a curl, or you can come in here and actually curl it around and come off. I think you can see that there. So if you're not good with the curls, then you can do it, you can fake it, in other words. Okay, so I'm gonna thin my green over here to the side a little bit. So did you have a question? Yeah, but those are exactly mini Dixie cups. There you go. Oh, the other thing that you can use is like your eggs, what your the crates that your eggs come in, your egg, is that what they're called? Egg crate. Um you can use those to put your ornaments in too. I can't reach mine, but I've used those. You can also take Hold on, I'm getting it. You can also set them in these, the little pallets, and you'll have to, you could get like three of the bigger ones on here. You can get more of the smaller, but like every other one, you can use that because it's got that rounded edge. So that works too. But yeah, the little Dixie cups, whatever you've got, um, it keeps, keeps it rolling and causing it to, Sorry. Anne asked if you paint on both sides of the ornaments. I usually do, Anne. Yes. Um, looky there. Huh. Okay. So yes. And then all the way around on this guy. So I usually have 10 to 12 of whatever I'm doing set up. And then I'll paint all of the same thing on all of them on one side. And then I'll turn and I'll paint again. Because time you get done with the 10 or the 12th one, those are usually dry. You can put a fan on it and dry them also. But yes, I usually do paint on both. Because like the little, if you came in late, this little square, 
this has got it all over it. Okay. All right, so back to curly cues. So I've thinned this a little bit. So stay up on the tippy toes. And when you go into the curl, you need to lift up and then you can press down. And this needs to be thinner to show you. And I think that's the biggest thing that people don't do. So you're pressing, you lift when you get ready to turn it, then you can press again. Okay, but you can just do a wiggle, you know, in different ways. You don't have to do, you know, that. You can just start here and wiggle it and it'll look like you did a curl. The plastic lid to the laundry detergent. There you go. Yeah, any, um, like your soda caps, anything like that, that has a little bit of a divot that the round ornaments can sit in. Shower curtain rings work great. Oh, there you go, if you have old ones. Yeah, anything that lifts it and gets it off of the piece and makes it easy, okay? All right, let's see. Let's, um, how are we doing on time, Jenny? We've got about an hour and a half. All right, so let's do some treasure gold real quick on this one. So treasure gold comes in different colors, okay? But it is, the product is still by folk art, by plaid, and it's treasure gold, but this is platinum. This is purple topaz. And then there is treasure gold gold, okay? There's like Gilbert, 14 colors maybe. I've got every one of them but tons of colors. So I tend to match whatever um, I'm using. I get the closest to it. If it's a cool color, I'm gonna use silver. If it's more warm, I'm gonna use the gold. If I don't have one of these, then that's perfect. Just silver or gold is fine. But I like, I when I did my ornaments a couple of years ago, um, I'm, I painted 140 of them one season, like in a, uh, what, two and a half month period. And I wanted different colors. And that just is the reason I got into them. Um, and different people have different sales going on, especially with the holidays, check out. So see, I'm taking the lid off, but it strings really bad. When I say string, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so if I were to go in here and grab the, do you see how that strings? It's like, is it gonna stop? So you need to be really careful and don't grab it and immediately go to your piece because you're gonna dribble or drizzle that all the way across your workspace, okay? Yeah, they're quite a bit. Yeah, um, you know, I like the standard, just the silver and the gold. There is, um, there's platinum and there's another silver. Uh, here's one rose gold, it's beautiful. It's kind of that, well, a rose gold color kind of a cross between a, a copper and a gold. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of that, make sure I don't have string and I kind of twist it to get all of that color on my brush. And then I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna accent areas. So I'm gonna press down, pull, 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 lift. And there is a comma stroke. Press, pull and lift. And I didn't do it fast. Remember, fast is not always best. No prize for finishing first. Take your time, look at what you've got, see where you need to tuck it. So here, because this one's coming out, I'm gonna curve it the other direction in, nice and slow. Grab some, I'm gonna twirl it to get that onto my brush. And then this one here, I can go a couple of, I can go, let's go this way. All right, and maybe here. Isn't that pretty? It just adds a little accent. You could even use this on the flower too. So see, I picked it up, kind of rolled it, and I'm loading. This isn't, a, you know, just if you don't want it to be transparent, you need to load for every single stroke. I cannot say that enough. If you want to get the look that I get, you need to do that. Pull and lift. Grab, twirl it to make sure it's in there. And a lot of, sometimes I'll put them up inside the little bling. 
just as an accent. And there. You can even come roll it. And there. Isn't that pretty? Now I can come back with pink jewels or these, um, what are these called? They're more of like an amber kind of a look. And I can add the jewels in the background, which is what I like to do with a lot of my ornaments. So like on this one, I had the blue bling and I came back with the same. And Hobby Lobby has the coordinating um, singles with the little scrolly ones. And I just fill in. You can always do just silver or just gold, which is nice. But if you want to bring out more blue, so somebody will say, I want pearl and I want blue accents. Um, and so far I've been able to do that, you know, what, what they want, but there may be comes a time that it'll just be silver. Okay. All right. So how quickly have, does the acrylic dry? How quickly does the acrylic dry? Pretty quick. I mean, this, the green we did on here on the stems, it's pretty quick. Now, treasure gold, not. It takes a long time for that to dry, okay? Just FYI. So you definitely want to set it on a cup, you know, so it doesn't roll, okay? The treasure gold takes a while. You can fan dry if you are wanting to do it quicker. But your acrylics, like I said, if I were doing 10 of the same ornament, even if there was different color flowers, but I would do all my petals, then all my leaves. And by the time I get from one to number 10 or 12, I can go back and start on number one again. So within, it depends on how thick it is. That makes a difference. 10 minutes, 15, not a whole long time. You'll be able to see. But if, if you notice, this has a kind of a satiny finish to it, a little bit of a sheen. That's the multi-surface. This was in the beginner class that I did. Um, there's a Zoom lesson with paperwork, stroke sheets, the whole nine yards. If you would like that, that's out on the website. You can find it under just type in beginner ornament. And I have an advanced one that has my paste ornaments in it. And it also includes the uh, pansy. Hold on, and I'll grab the pansy one. I think I can get it. The advanced one has the pansy. Isn't that a beautiful flower? Me and Robin love pansies. Yeah, folk art, treasure gold, and then it comes in different colors, Luann. So it's not just gold. It comes in platinum. It comes in purple topaz. Purple topaz is what I used on that because it kind of has a pinky purple tint to it. But there's like, I want to say 14 colors in it, if I remember right, 14 or 16. And then in the advanced class, you get, um, it's like $24.95 for the class. You get the pansy, you get a paste ornament. These are the purple mat that I can't find anymore. If anybody ever sees these, message me. Um, these are huge. You can see they're as big as my hand, the four inch, and then the peacock feather one. So we did this one, this one, and a paste ornament in the advanced ornament class. There again, you get paperwork with that download. It's $24.95 on the website. Just type in ornaments and you'll find it. Okay. And the paste is one of our products um, at Colors for Earth. It works on glass. It works on a glazed ceramic piece. And then it's just fired on those pieces. This is in a non-fired because it's a Low fire, no fire, piping paste. Okay. All right. I think we need to give away, let's give away some glitter glue. How about that? Jenny, you want to spin the um, comments and we'll give away some glue. And you're writing this down for me, right? Isn't that pretty? Okay. All right. Oh, and she put you the link for those uh, Zoom classes if you want to purchase those. Those are available. All right. She has a winner. 
for some glitterate glue. That was the glue that I used on the inside. All right, who's our winner, Jenny? Maria Crowder. Maria Crowder. Okay, Jenny's going to type that in the chat. <coughs> I will send you um, a glitterate glue. I need you, if any of the winners, I need you to message me on Facebook with your um, address, shipping information. Okay. And if I already have it, if you've ordered before, then just put that in there. Okay. And make sure I got your email so that you can get tracking on stuff. Okay. So we had, we gave away a brush and then that. All right. I think we need to give away a beginner Zoom class. How about spinning that wheel again? Spin, 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 spin. I can hear it. Click, 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 click. <laughs> All right, Jenny, I'm going to switch my camera back to me. One second. Uh, oh, let's hope I keep, let's hope I pick the right camera. Hmm. I think it's this one. Uh, no, it's not that one. Well, it is, but it's not. All right. So who is our winner? Bobby Sleep. Bobby Sleeth, S-L-E-E-T-H. That's a new name. I don't recognize that one. All right. Now, Bobby, this is the um, beginner ornament class. If that's not something that interests you, like I said, remember, you can use that as far as the stroke work on any surface, whatever you, whatever your medium happens to be. Okay. But if that's something that doesn't interest you, just get with me on Messenger on Facebook and we'll figure out something uh, maybe you want a couple of ceramic technique sheets instead of that, okay? Well, thank you, Gilbert. Gilbert says he likes watching painting ornaments. I, this is the last two years I haven't painted a lot um, because of what happened to me, but um, I'm trying to get back into it. It's just, you know, when you work all the time, it's hard to paint 120 of them like I used to. So anyway, and have a real job and work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found some tips yes Luann asked in the chat what your schedule is between now and uh January 1 what is my schedule um I don't know why why Luann what are you, are you wanting a private class or something or you do I get to take time off do I get to have a Christmas vacation <laughs> um I have to take my mom is here so she's being very quiet in the living room um I have to take her back to Missouri probably on um, the 31st or the 30th. So other than that, I'm going to be here working. All right. You are welcome. All right. So much information, hopefully. Um, and if you miss something, you can go back and watch it and you can reach out to me. I'm happy to help. You can always comment on any of my videos and that way I can answer you. If I for some reason, I don't answer. Some reason, it doesn't always tell me when there's a comment. I have to go look. So just reach out to me on Facebook or by email. My email is ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com. And maybe Jenny can type that in. And uh, you can always reach me that way. Or you can pick up the phone, call the office, 817-677-5020 is the Colors for Earth phone number. Okay. You like to hear Jenny Robin? Yeah, it's kind of nice, this platform. Um, I do have an announcement. They are laying fiber optics in, I mean, literally on my street. And I'm hoping <laughs> after the first of the year that I can go back to um, doing my broadcast on both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Um, that's going to give me more speed and everything. So yeah, Jenny put my email in there. So copy that if you need it. You can also email me from the website. Website is coloresforearth.com. Has nothing to do with the acrylics that we use tonight, but that is my company and that's how you can get in touch with me from there or Facebook, okay? Well, thank you, Marie. Yes, Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy New Year. I won't be on next week. I'm gonna take a week off and then we'll start back after the first of the year, okay? All right. All right, you guys, take care. Love you. And 
happy painting. <laughs>